here I am again today in the lovely village of Alton not far from Alton Towers but I'm not actually going to be going to the theme park today I'm here in search of um, the old canal that used to run through Alton Village and just past the Alton Towers estate so uh, it might be quite interesting just heading down to the bottom of the village now. And I think I'll try and park by the old uh, railway station and we'll start from there. And I'll see if I can park on the left here somewhere, hopefully. Okay, so here we are, down in the bottom of the village and uh, in front of us there, there's the old lodge to the uh, train station If we look down there, there's the old train station buildings If we turn around, that would be up to Alton Towers, up uh, beyond those trees up there I'm coming down here, that's the uh, old mill in front of us, and that was um, for various uses over the years, I think that's been like a copper wire mill and a colour mill and various things, and up on the top of the hill that's the old castle, that's now used as a school. And just down here, I think that used to be um, like where there was the water was pulled to go towards the mill down there. This is the um, other side of the railway bridge down in the village still. And as you can see, that leads out into um, a track, and that's the direction we're going to be going shortly down there. And as you can see again, the uh, the mill is over here. That's now owned by the Alton Towers Estate. And I don't think they really use it anymore, maybe for storage and stuff like that. And there's been a mill here for hundreds of years. And um, it actually used to be owned by the monks of nearby Croxton Abbey. But in the early 1700s, I believe, um, the Earls of Shrewsbury, who owned the Alton Terrors estate, um, they purchased it off Croxton Abbey, and that's been owned by the Alton Terrors estate since. So we're just going to go down this way as we uh, start searching for the old canal, and uh, yeah, see you shortly. And just sort of 30 metres past the mill got this uh, little derelict building here not sure of the exact use of that but um, as you can see it's in a derelict state now all covered in ivy and whatever I'm guessing it could have been um, some sort of building linked to the railway that came slightly after the canal. Because the railway line is just over here as you can see. Railway line basically ran across this track here. As you can see there's a new mile post here. We're going to go and have a look at that the other side. Before we carry on, by the way, this is the rear of the mill. So if you walk down the, um, the old railway track, you can see this old mole post 
that I was at the other side of recently. And these are replicas of the originals that would have been here from uh, sort of the start of the 1800s when the canal came around. And these new mile posts have been created by the Canals Trust in conjunction with the Churnit Valley Living Landscape Partnership. And they've, um, they've tried to put them in the approximate positions where they originally were. But um, in certain cases, they've um, moved them slightly further away from the canal. So that they can be seen better from footpaths and stuff. And I've got a feeling that the canal used to run next to the line down here. So, as you can see, this little dip in the landscape... I believe that's where the old canal used to run down here. And if we go back, that is running towards the rail the railway bridge towards the station. That's at the end of there. And I'll just move a, a bit further down. So as you can see, going backwards towards the train station, this little bit on the right would have been the route of the canal. And it would have run past where the uh, railway line and railway station is now. But as we, uh, as we go under the bridge here, the canal probably would have sort of slightly veered off to the left whereas the railway line that came a bit afterwards you can see that veers off towards the right now so the canal probably would have cut through to the left but obviously there would have been no uh, railway station there at that point it would have just been a canal So we have to use our imagination a little bit because um, the canal has been closed for almost 200 years now. So you have to imagine the amount of vegetation and uh, how it's been disrupted by the railway line coming later and stuff. So that it's just a little sort of uh, gully now, I suppose, towards the, uh, the left of the railway line at the moment. And it was said before that the uh, railway line that came after the canal sort of ceased operating went directly over the, um, the old route of the canal. But that doesn't actually seem to be the case. The railway line seems to have come and gone along the side of the canal. And that makes sense actually because why would you build the railway directly over the canal when you could use the canal, what was left of it, to transport uh, goods and materials for actually building the railway line? So it appears that they've built the railway line next to the old canal. Still some uh, water down here on this little bit. A bit further down the track now, the, um, the old railway lines to the left now, so we're looking back. And just down off the side of the track, you can see here, how the canal would have run right through these trees and you've still got water in there as we move along and you can see how it runs through the middle of all these trees down there into the distance and that's the direction we're going to be going I 
I've actually brought various maps with me and uh, the green line is the line of uh, the old canal and just underneath it, I don't know if you can see it or not but is um, just underneath it runs the railway line basically not far from the canal so the green line at this end is where we started by the train station we've made just a little bit of progress so far um, up towards the middle there are the tracks up into the Alton Terrors estate so we'll be going down past there and then uh, further along out into the countryside and we'll eventually get to a place called Crumpwood Weir so we'll be having a look down there as well so I'm pretty much standing in the old canal now As you can see, that goes straight up there. So we're on this uh, path now, which is just to the right of where I've just been standing, where the water is in the old canal. And um, obviously this must have been an old towpath through here. And uh, while I'm walking down here, I'll go through the history of the canal a little bit. So the construction started in around 1807. And this project was overseen by John Rennie, who was a Scottish civil engineer. And he designed many bridges, canals, docks, warehouses and uh, stuff like that. And this canal that runs through Alton was actually part of the Utoxeter Canal. And there was actually a little bit of controversy at the time when they wanted to build um, the Alton leg of the Utoxeter Canal because the Earl of Shrewsbury at the time, which was Charles Torbert, who owned Alton Towers. He was worried that the mill that we've um, seen previously, he was worried that the water levels to run his mill would be compromised by the new canal running past and um, using water, etc. So it was a little while until the early Shrewsbury actually agreed to let them build the canal through the estate. And so the Utoxeter Canal was basically built in stages between 1808 and 1811. And as we can see, still plenty of water down here. But um, we've had quite a few floods this year. So I think I've probably been quite lucky with the level of water, because it's given us a good indication of um, how the canal ran through the landscape. And like I say, um, looking at the remnants of this part of the canal now, it doesn't actually look like what you'd traditionally think a canal looks like, sort of deep with uh, plenty of water. But we have to understand that this is almost 200 years of vegetation and neglect, so it's probably just filled up with all sorts over the years. But luckily we can still see the path and as we go further down we'll see um, better evidence of the canal. And you can see how close the canal uh, would have run to the Alton Towers estate because the other side of there in the far end of the picture you can um, just about see fencing for the current Alton Towers theme park estate. And that track that runs the other side of that fence, if we went all the way down to the left and carried on uh, following that track, that eventually leads to the station lodge um, that we saw when we first arrived in the village by the railway station. And I have actually walked to that from inside the park many, many years ago. So um, I'm quite familiar with how the land lies and stuff around here. 
There's plenty of water down this little stretch as we carry on. And then the uh, path stroke, old towpath, suddenly uh, becomes a bit less than a path. It's probably worth uh, wearing some boots if you're uh, if you're going to be walking down here at any point. There we go. Back onto a more stable path. This is uh, pretty clearly defined. Uh, so a towpath down here now, with the um, what was the canal on the left, just down there. Now it might get interesting in a minute because as the uh, woods sort of open up a little bit to our left, the other side of the canal, that's actually. Um, the paths come down there, out of the Valley Gardens at Alton Towers. And you might have heard of the site of the Battle of Slain Hollow. So that is basically through those trees in the distance. And apparently, the Earl of Shrewsbury used to have a canal wharf down here. So um, I'm going to try and find that, if I can. So what I'm going to actually try and do is cross where the old canal would have uh, been down here. I'm going to try and get to the other side towards the wharf if I don't sink. Yeah, feels a bit sinky down here. Okay, made it. Well, made it this far anyway. Yeah, it's very marshy over here, so uh, choose your route carefully. Alright, so uh, just making my way across towards this uh, fence, which is basically the Alton Towers theme park estate to the other side of this fence now. So. They've got a track where they can drive their little vans down or whatever if they need to get to the station lodge for whatever reason. But we're going to move further along and look for any remnants of this old wharf a bit further down. If we look through the fence here, you can see the paths inside the uh, theme park. And that path ahead of us would lead up towards the Valley Gardens. You'd eventually come out near the Pagoda Fountain if you follow that path all the way up. And the wharf apparently was round here somewhere, so I'm going to try and find it. Incidentally, look what I found just outside the theme park fence. One of the old information plaques from when the uh, the gardens were open much wider. So this would have been on one of the nature trails down here. So it shows you how far uh, you used to be able to explore in the gardens at Alton Terrace. Still looking for that wharf, but at the side of the canal down this little bit. Some kind of man-made rock structure. I don't know if it was some kind of outlet from the canal. If the level's got too high or something. So uh, yeah, that's still visible down it? Actually, that Alton Towers Wharf wasn't quite where I thought it was. It's actually a bit further on down. 
I think this is it here. Uh -huh. Yeah, so just coming into view on the left hand side through these trees. There's the canal and if we look through to the other side you can probably just about make out some uh, rock formation at the other side and that's where the Alton Towers Wharf would have been. I'll um, zoom in a little bit on here. Can you see the rock formation on the other side? Just beyond those sort of newish trees in the middle of the canal. Just down there. I'll, um, I'll get some pictures on my um, camera in a minute and I'll place them over but you can see that and it sort of curves the rock work form um, curves a little bit around there you can just see it up until around that tree on the right hand side so there you go from about the right end of the screen now going back along here And then just above that, these are the tracking Twalton Towers. So, um, the early Shrewsbury probably would have used this wharf to unload sort of building materials and stuff. And then take it up the track, back up where we've come from. Up um, Slane Hollow <coughs> and through where the Alton Towers gardens are now. And up to the house and stuff. Yeah, so as I was saying, um, this wharf would have been used by the early Shrewsbury for sort of um, getting building materials and coal for the house and stuff like that. And if you think about the time period, the canal opened around 1810, 1811, and the major building works were going on on the Alton Towers estate, enlarging the house and... Um, filling the gardens with features and stuff in that time. So you can imagine this probably would have been quite busy down here with building materials and um, stuff like that being offloaded from the canal. So um, it's quite important really. And like I say, you can just see the remnants of uh, part of the wharf down there. And there was tree clearance in this area around 2018. So you could actually see it a bit better. And I might have a picture somewhere, and I'll pop that up if I can uh, find it. Yeah, so the top of that stonework would have been under the uh, sort of shrubbery and stuff in front of us. So we'd sort of be on the wharf area now. And as you can see, once there'd been goods and coal and stuff unloaded, We'll go up the path here, up towards Slane Hollow and up the gardens area, into the house and stuff. So if we go back to the map again, we've come along the green line and we're just about where my finger is. And that's where the wharf is. And up there to the left, that's where the paths go up towards Alton Towers, up Slane Hollow. Yeah, so I thought that the wharf area was in the little bit that's not highlighted green in the middle there. But it's actually a bit further down to the right, just slightly off the map. But you can see how the canal interacts with um, the bottom of the Alton Towers estate there. That um, basically covers the, um, the top area of the map there and goes further on up. Right, so as we leave the wharf area now, We'll carry on on the path a bit and interestingly where you can still see a bit of water and stuff where the canal was here it, um, it's actually been covered over or whatever over time and you can't really trace the actual canal from this little bit but we'll still follow the path and uh, that should bring us back to um, a situation where you can see where the canal was better so we'll just carry on. Right, so 
as we come to the end of this little bit of path where you can't make out a canal anymore on the left. We'll take a left. As you can see on uh, on your left there's the security gates to get into Alton Towers. Gate 17. Nice security camera up there. And then um, we'll follow this path round to the right. Now as we carry on further up this path, we we'll go past this modern sort of um, electrical building or whatever it is. Yeah, that's National Grid. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on further up this uh, path straight up here. Right, so as we continue up the same path for quite a distance, on the left you'll see a big rock formation. And that's called Oina's Rock. And um, according to legend, in the Battle of Slain Hollow, uh, one of the kings in the battle was supposed to have sheltered there with his men. And uh, I'll probably just uh, pop up there now, because it'd be rude not to, as you can see, just up there. So we're going to have a quick look while we're here. I have done a video about it in the past. Uh, I think it's on the channel still. Here we go, up the steep path. And here it is. There are two milestones um, in this rock which give the distance to Alton Towers or Alton Abbey as it was then. This one obviously is broke. But if we uh, go across, it should be on the other side. Yeah, that's still fully intact by the looks of it. There you go, from Alton Abbey by the Rock Drive. And from Alton Abbey by the Rock Walk. And underneath, there's this uh, nice little sheltered area is probably where the story comes from that uh, the king, I think it was King Oina, was supposed to have sheltered with his troops during battle. I think um, this has been quite popular for rock climbing in the past at some point as well. You can see why it's um, probably be quite difficult. Now as we get towards the top of this path, off to the left you can actually see the uh, woodland lodges as part of the Alton Terrace Hotel uh, complex, just through the trees, the yellowish things. Let's stop a minute. See, just through there. Okay, so we've got the woodland lodges on our left over there and we're going to take a right down this path now. Still continuing down this path because we went, uh, we went quite high when we went up that path before, so 
just going down to the uh, sort of the bottom of the valley level. As you can see, we've got uh, one of these very old estate walls still in place, covered in moss. Right, so when we get uh, towards the bottom of this path, we should see something quite interesting in a minute. Now this is one of the old canal bridges. And there you can see the canal the other side. Okay, so we'll just catch up on where I've been. So that was where the Alton Towers Wharf was, around there. And what I've done is I've took a detour off, up park banks, past Oina's Rock there, and I've come up through the woods, and then I've come back through this track down here, and then that's where the bridge is there. So that's where we are now, and then Crumpwood Weir is going to be further down here, so I'm going to do that stretch, then I'm going to come back, and uh, probably try and be a bit closer to the old canal until we get back to where we were earlier. So as you can see by the canal bridge here, the, um, the canal is quite clear to see. And if we look that way, that's heading back into Alton Village. So once we've been down to uh, Crumpwood Weir, we're going to go back that way. But first, we'll have a little look at the bridge. So this is called Bridge 70. And this is the only complete original bridge on the Utoxeter Canal that's still left. And this was built in around 1810. This bridge was actually at risk of collapse. So it was restored by volunteers between 2012 and 2016. That's the other side of the bridge. You can still make out the canal, just about. Before the restoration, no one actually knew who owned the bridge, so it had to be subject to a compulsory purchase order before they could work on it. It's now owned by the Calden and New Toxeter Canals Trust, and it was repaired with new coping stones, a new deck, and repointing. If you go down here, you can actually use the uh, towpath under the bridge. And there's the canal. And this here, this wooden thing, is called a rubbing post. And that was basically there to protect the bridge from damage caused by towing ropes of horse-drawn narrowboats. And that's still in place, as you can see. And as you can see, next to the canal in this stretch, they've actually uh, repaired the towpath, made it easier for walking along and stuff. But we're going to uh, turn round now, and we're going to go the other way, towards uh, Crumpwood Weir. So I'll uh, crack on a little bit. All right, so we're on the path, um, heading towards Crumpwood Weir now. And uh, just follow this footpath, down past, uh, next to the canal, as usual. We'll just follow along here for a little while. All right, now this is interesting. Just a bit further along that path, we've got uh, an old canal lock.
Yeah, so looking back down the path where we've come, the canal would have come along here and then would have come along here but the railway was across here so that's obviously been filled in. And then to change levels, getting ready to go towards Crumpwood Weir, you would have had to go through these locks down here. So that would have headed uh, across there where we'll go to in a minute, the uh, weir. So yeah, down the locks here. I'll just have a look around the other side. So walking around the side of the lock there, interestingly they've made a little bench resembling uh, like one of the arms from the lock. And then just over. Got the other side of the locks. And that's heading towards the weir now at Crumpwood. I'm going to follow the right hand side of uh, the little canal towards the weir out. This is an interesting little gully of um, sort of cylinder shaped stones. Which is strange. So uh, I'll see where this little thing takes us. Ah, so here we go then. So the canal's on our left. And then it's meeting the River Chernick that's coming in from the right. So here's the river. And this is where the two meet, the canal into the river. And I'm going to pop over that other side in a second. I'm going to go over to the weir now. And it might be a bit noisy with machinery, so apologies if I can't um, carry on talking at any point. I think we've got uh, pump houses or engine houses here. Right, so this is the weir. And uh, if you look at the top part, across the top in the distance, that's where the canal boats would have had to go across and try not to get sucked into uh, the bottom part while they were going across. And at the other end, at the far end, there's uh, another lock at that end to change the, uh, the water levels again. You can see on the right hand side where the boat should have had to go across very carefully. So as you can see, the boat would have gone right across, well straight in front of us along there. And then the river churn, it carries on towards the left down there. So the boats would have had to navigate this very carefully, just to go straight ahead. And um, the gentleman here has just given me permission to just stand on here and uh, film this, because you're not usually allowed on this bridge. So that was very kind of him, if he ever watches this back. inside one of the rooms next to it. So that was the quite interesting Crumpwood Weir and now we're going to start heading back uh, towards Alton. 
I think I'll have a quick look at the map just to show you um, where we are now. So now we're pretty much here. We've gone all the way along, so I'm just going to head back the lower route now and um, eventually come back to the village in Alton. And I think it's probably about two and a half miles, or it could be a little bit further or a little bit shorter, I'm not sure, but that's what it feels like. So we'll, uh, we'll do that. Alright, so we're going to be going back past the bridge and onto the uh, new little bit of towpath that they've uh, provided. So as you can see as we head back, this is uh, probably the most obvious part of canal that you can see with a nicely uh, defined new towpath as well. A little further down, let me just uh, go around this corner. It looks like there's another mile post here. There you go. So, you tox it to seven miles. A true rear, 23 miles. I think a true rear was where Wedgwood was um, manufactured, so it's quite significant to point that out to the distance, really. And we'll follow this path, which is um, quite near to the canal still, as you can see, just down here. So since the canal was finished in around 1811, it had always lost money, really. And by the 1840s, it was still losing money. And obviously by this point, rail travel was becoming um, the most dominant form of transporting goods and people and stuff like that and uh, so at this point the people in charge of the railways wanted this route really to put their railways through and like I said earlier it was thought that the railway basically just went straight over where the canal was but as we've seen it actually pretty much runs alongside the canal for most of the route um, through and past Alton. And so the official end for the canal came on the 15th of January 1849 and after that some sections were sort of simply filled in or built over and um, other bits were just abandoned. So now we're basically following the old railway line back towards Alton, uh, which is running next to the canal, which is to our right through the trees. And obviously the railway went eventually with Beechin's cuts, and uh, so there's no railway down here either. Isn't it? As you can see, it's still here through the trees next to the railway line. I'm not sure what these posts were. Probably some kind of fencing next to the railway line or something. Not sure. Maybe a canal or railway buff can tell me. So as we've seen, there have been some bits of restoration like um, on the bridge and with the part of the towpath and also um, tree clearance and stuff like that but there was also talk some years ago of trying to reinstate pretty much the whole of the Utoxeter canal or at least um, a large part of it but they reckoned it was going to cost about 90 million pound to try and do that and it would have relied on a lot of volunteer work as well and um, at this point it looks like just the bits we've seen so far today have been done round here. I'm not sure about the rest of the Utoxeter Canal. But um, 
obviously I'm just concentrating on the Alton leg today. And now we're pretty much back on the path from the first part of the video. Just heading back in the other direction towards Alton Village. We're almost back at Alton Village now, on the railway line. So here we are, back in Alton Village, and the railway that eventually put an end to the canal. <coughs> and if you're as nerdy as me, I hope you enjoyed that video. Found bits of it interesting, if possible. And uh, thanks for watching, I appreciate it. Here's Alton Station. <laughs>